What is happening, everybody? Mike Delgado. Everybody? Everybody? What is happening, boot junkies? Oh, what is happening, boot junkies? What's happening, boot junkies? What's happening, boot junkies? Let's do that again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Here we go. <laughs> what is happening, boot junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on Home Studio Setup for VoiceOver. And today's video is not so much about Home Studio Setup for VoiceOver as it is about Home Studio Setup for streaming. And we're going to talk about and give a walkthrough of a brand new product that's out on the market from the company Elgato. We're going to talk about this microphone right here, the new Elgato Wave 3 USB microphone, specifically designed for streamers. When Elgato reached out to me and they said, we have a new microphone coming out on the market. Would you like to test it? I was like, absolutely. I'm a big fan of Elgato products. I use the cam links, uh, number of cam links that I have in order to do, do all my capture cards. Um, I uh, use their stream deck. I use the stream deck here to manage all of my live streaming uh, for my one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching that I do, for conferences that I do, and so forth. I'm a big fan of Elgato products. So when they said, we'd like to send you a microphone, absolutely. I'm all about it. When I got the promotional material, I found out that the microphone itself was um, sort of optimized and designed uh, with the company Lewitt, Lewitt Microphones. I'm a great big fan of Lewitt Microphones. Uh, I've got a number of Lewitt Microphones. I've got their 240, their 440, their 550, their 540, their 640. I got a whole bunch of Lewitt Microphones. Really liked them. In fact, my regular streaming setup has the Lewitt. This is a 440 Pure. It's part of my regular streaming setup. So I was super excited to learn about their new streaming optimized microphone. And so what I thought would be helpful, since it's brand new, on, brand new on the market, I thought it might be helpful to give you sort of an example of how you would use it in the streaming setup, because that's what we're doing here. We're in my streaming setup. And to give you a sense of how it sounds, some of its foibles, what you might expect for your money. So let's go through and talk about this microphone in this streaming setup. So I have my OBS right down here, and I've got uh, all my computers. So you'll see me glancing down from time to time, just looking at the screen, make sure I've got the right screen up. Okay, let's talk about the actual user interface of the microphone itself. This one is the Wave 3. There's also a Wave 1 microphone that is missing, uh, is one feature fewer than, uh, my understanding, one feature fewer than the Wave 3. I don't have the Wave 1, so I only have the Wave 3 to give you as an example. So let's go through and give a quick overview of what the, the buttons and features that you can see that you'll encounter on the microphone, just so you can get an idea of how it works. There are three buttons, uh, there are three modes on this microphone, and they're activated through the through this multifunction knob. This knob is also a button that switches between the three modes of the microphone. And those three modes are, first, this one with the microphone icon, is the gain setting. So you, you turn that knob until you get the right amount of gain, how much, how loud the microphone is on input. So if you turn it up, I get louder. If you turn it down, I get quieter. And that's actually the input of the microphone, how loud you're going to be going out through your stream or going onto your disc or whatever it is that you're recording into. Press the button again, and it switches over to the headphone mode. Headphone is how loud you're hearing yourself in your, mo in your headphones. So you get to monitor, you're going to hear yourself back in the headphones, whatever's going into the microphone, and you adjust that with the headphone knob. It also, since this is a USB microphone, it acts as a sound card. It's getting sound from the computer, which you'll be able to also hear too, and that headphone knob adjusts how loud everything is in your headphones. Finally, the third mode is a mixer that allows you to mix between hearing only the microphone. Right now, I only hear the microphone in my ears, monitoring exactly what I hear. And then on the far other end, essentially takes my headphones away, but allows me to hear the computer and everywhere in between. So you get to mix how much you want to hear of the sound coming from your gameplay or whatever you might be streaming and how loud you hear yourself. So you can go back and forth. Now, you've probably noticed that button it's pretty loud. For my for my perspective, these are sort of set. This is a set and forget kind of mode. You get these dialed in before your stream starts, and then you don't mess with them again. If you do need to adjust them, 
you don't do it by, t well, you could do it by touching the mic, but you don't need to do it by uh, touching the microphone because that clicking sound will get, you know, will go out over your stream. So there's another way that you can uh, adjust that. I'll show that to you in a few minutes. On the top of the microphone, see if I can do this without accidentally knocking out the USB cable. On the top of the microphone, there's a button that says mute or a pad that says mute. Get you back to where you can hear me. The mute button is a capacitive button. It does not click. All you have to do is just, light, just lightly touch it. You'll notice the LED will turn red and it mutes. So if that way you have to, if you have to cough, you just quickly and discreetly touch the top of the microphone and it will automatically mute. As long as that LED is red, you're muted. Pretty straightforward. That's actually a pretty handy feature because you can touch the microphone here and not transmit any sound. There's no handling noise. There's no handling noise with the mute button like there is with the big clicky button. So that's sort of the overview of the microphone. It's very straightforward. I will say with the, the button on the front, the clicky button, it is, um, it's, it's a heavy to press button. You really have to put your hand behind the microphone and click it. If you try and push it just with the microphone, you uh, just just with the weight of the microphone, one the stand you really have to crank the stand down tightly. But then you just end up tipping the whole microphone. You tip the whole microphone over. The amount of force required to push the button is greater than the weight weight of the base. Makes for a nice durable clicky button, but it does mean that it tips over. So you do have to sort of brace it, which just adds more handling noise to the microphone. But that's the lay of the land. Pretty straightforward. It's a cardioid pattern microphone, which means the front of the microphone is going to be sensitive. But if I turn it around, the back of the microphone, you'll hear it's much less sensitive. It doesn't hear me nearly as well because cardioid microphones are sensitive much more from the front and to some extent the sides. It says in the documentation that this is a tight cardioid pattern, which is not a technical term, but it could be somewhere between a supercardioid and a hypercardioid pattern where the sensitivity is focused more towards the front, less to the sides, and even less to the rear. Uh, so it could be some sort of cardioid pattern. Now, you'll notice, if you're familiar with any of my other microphone reviews, you'll notice that... I don't sound like me. Part of the documentation of the microphone says that it is um, optimized for voice. And I think what Elgato has done is I think they've added a specific sort of EQ curve to make this mic more appropriate and easier to use for streamers. This is not a voiceover microphone. Even though it's a condenser microphone, this is not really optimized for voiceover. It's much more optimized for um, the situation where if you're a streamer and you don't know a lot about audio, you know more about gaming or streaming or whatever it is, you don't know a lot about audio, this is a microphone that's going to work and it's going to work with you rather than against you. There's a couple of places where that happens. In order to explain it, I'll add... I'm going to introduce the other component of this wave sort of a package, the, the, the wave suite of functionality, and that is with the wave link software. When you get the microphone, you also get a download for wave link. Now what wave link is, is it's essentially a mixer that allows you to interact with the microphone and control what goes out over your stream as part of the whole package. So by default, it starts with, it includes WAVE as being, uh, the WAVE 3 as being one of the microphones, and you get other audio sources that can be appropriate for your stream. So this could be, sure, it could be music because that was what was there by default. This could be a game. This could be any other sources of audio. And in the mixer, you get two different you get two different sliders. Sorry, I just moved it by accident because my mouse is on the wrong screen. Uh, but you get two different sliders for each. One has headphone, and one has the stream icon. So for each one of the different sources, you can actually adjust how loud it is for you, the streamer, 
and how loud the source is for the people listening to your stream. So you can actually adjust up and down how loud your signal is on your stream. That's pretty cool. Now, at the beginning, I, I, when I was talking about the individual buttons, the individual modes on here, and I said that button is too clicky, it's loud, you don't actually need to press those buttons ever again once you've, once you've got them set the first time. You can actually adjust it directly. It's sort of fly-by-wire here in Wave. So you can actually adjust the amount of gain. You can make it quieter. You can make it louder. Uh, and you can adjust how much gain, how much is coming in. You can adjust the volume in your headphones just by sliding that slider. And that same mix feature, you can move that back and forth. Now, I'll also uh, point out here that there's two other features that are listed with the Wave Source. And these are two other aspects that I think are designed specifically to help streamers, especially streamers who are not terribly familiar with audio. They just want their microphone to work. They want it to cut through, you know, thumping on the desk. They don't want that to transmit into the microphone. Elgato has actually designed this microphone with two additional features to try and help the streamer out. The first, and the top here, is this enhanced low cut filter. Now, what a low cut filter is, a low cut filter essentially just removes the bass. So frequently, if you're new to microphones, frequently that very lowest bass tends to get transmitted into your, uh, into your microphone if you, if you bump the desk that will often end up getting into the microphone. If you're really heavy with your keyboard, it can sound very, very thumpy, 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 and distracting in your, in your, uh, for your listeners, the people watching your stream. So by adding that low cut, um, that that low cut filter, it cuts out the lows. It cuts out the bass. Now, even as a voice actor. I typically EQ myself with my with my high performance microphones. I actually equalize out much of that lowest bass anyway. I typically will cut everything from 70 to 80 hertz. I'll reduce those anyway. This microphone is doing it for you. Just the natural response of that microphone. It doesn't have, it just sort of is from 70 hertz and down it's not um, as sensitive to it. So on, the, on, the, uh, on the, the mixer here, even if you undo the enhanced low cut filter, you'll see that some of the bassiness does come into my voice, but it doesn't have all of the bass. The bi microphone just by design is not sensitive down that low. And that's really to help the streamer out so that the, uh, so that the thumping doesn't end up in the microphone. Handling noise doesn't end up. Plosives, if you pop into the mic, it won't distract and won't ruin your stream's audio. So it's there to help. It affects the sound of the microphone for sure. It definitely affects the sound of the microphone. However, it's going to make it work in the, in the most situations. Below that is another really fascinating feature uh, that's built into the, to, into the microphone, and that's called Clip Guard. The Clip Guard is designed to help eliminate clipping. So if you're a if you scream when you rage quit a game, the microphone will tend to clip. By enhance, by activating this thing called Clip Guard, it will automatically adjust the microphone so that you don't clip. So if you do put the microphone right up to your mouth instead of clipping, like I'm going into the red now in OBS, it will hopefully reduce the likelihood that you clip. The signal will still get loud but less likely that you clip, which makes for a, a more pleasant uh, experience for your listeners. You don't want, they don't want to hear clipping. It's very, very distracting. So the clip guard automatically does that uh, for you. It doesn't mean that you couldn't also use a compressor. You may consider using a compressor to even out the difference between your loudest and your quietest parts, but the clip guard will help prevent you from clipping. Super cool. So that's actually, I find that to be a very helpful, a very helpful feature. I think it's a very clever feature because the thing I know from a lot of um, my experience, just in people that I talk to, people that I consult with one on one, they want help setting up compressors because they can be very, very confusing. So it's a it's a helpful feature. It's a helpful feature, and the Wavelink takes care of it. Takes care of it for you. That's pretty cool.
Now, the other thing that's, uh, I think, really handy about the Wavelink software, since this does act as a mixer, let me just drag OBS onto the screen here so that you guys can see it. In OBS, in the Wavelink, or uh, in, in your mixer, in your uh, properties, you'll see that your mixer is actually, all you need to do is just map one audio source. You just need to map the one audio source, and that is the Wavelink software itself. So it will, the Wavelink software has a really nice, easy to understand interface for what's going out on your stream. All of the different sources, you can adjust them on the fly, and Wavelink will take care of it. So you only need to map the one source Wavelink on your screen. I actually think that is pretty clever. That certainly has made it easier. Audio, uh, you know, getting all the audio routing and everything correct in OBS can be something of a challenge. So the Wavelink actually does simplify that quite a bit. Let me just close this screen here. Uh, so after you've after you designated Wavelink, you just never need to do anything else. It's got it taken care of for you. And the Wavelink software just takes care of it. So Elgato is part of their sort of streaming ecosystem. They're just continually making things easier, easier, easier for streamers so that you can concentrate on the content creation and not get bogged down in all of the technology. Now, I mentioned before that I um, also use a Stream Deck. The Stream Deck it's my understanding, I didn't try and install it, but the it's my understanding from the literature, the, the functions in Wavelink are also mappable to your Stream Deck. You can adjust a lot of the features of the microphone from your Stream Deck. It's all part of the same ecosystem. Super handy. Super, super handy. It, it, overall, I think it's got a really interesting... Um, part of the streaming ecosystem. It's a USB microphone. It's really, really straightforward. Price, uh, I think, is $159, $160 bucks, right around there, depending on what country you're in. It's, about in. it's about in that range, depending on your local currency. There are two additional components that I don't have that um, I did not get with the, with the Elgato, um, from Elgato. Uh, but you can, if you do want to have it not on the desk, if you want to have a shock mount that you can mount into a boom arm or onto a microphone stand, you absolutely can get a shock mount that's form fitted to it. You can also get a pop filter that's just integrated in so it looks good on camera. What you do get, and let me just, uh, this is from me testing before. What you do get in it is you do get a microphone stand adapter. So the, the microphone stand itself, this does disconnect from the bracket. And it's threaded with a typical quarter inch 20 thread. So the threading, this will match up, the microphone bracket will match up to a uh, Gorillapod, a, micro, a tripod, anything that takes the standard quarter inch, a, a GoPro, GoPro style mount, anything that's the uh, quarter inch 20 thread. Now, if you want to connect it to a microphone stand, the other end here uh, of the adapter, you can put it to a microphone stand and the smaller threads is com are compatible with most of your boom arms, those scissor mounts that, that will move in and out. Um, this adapter will cover both of them. So let's just see how it works here. I'm going to put the adapter onto this particular mic stand. This is just a, a budget mic stand. I will disconnect the base, just unscrews. Try not to drop it. Loosen up the mic stand. I'm trying to do this all live on camera. Oh boy. Probably not the smartest thing to do. But now you just you just connect it. And we'll get everything. I'm just trying to make sure I don't knock the USB cable out by accident. Tighten up your mic stand. Manage my cords. And now you've got you know, a really straightforward, uh, uh, a really straightforward mic mount. 
this a stand like this desk stance not terribly expensive i think this one this was from on stage dance it's probably 20 bucks if that but it's adjustable so if you do want that microphone more in frame than out of frame like it was before if you want to be closer to that microphone you absolutely can do it it's got um some built-in pop filtering so as long as you keep the keep the microphone sort of at a 45 degree you aim the microphone at your mouth rather than your mouth into the microphone um this is in this um aspect you're much more likely to send a plosive into it um and i think it actually looks better i think it sounds better just talking past the microphone aim that microphone at your mouth rather than your mouth at the microphone and you'll see it and it will take care of it it will take care of it for you Overall, I think the sound has been optimized to try and make it so that it can cut through, um, cut through the mix. So if you do have multiple sounds all going at the same time, this microphone is very mid-range forward. You can hear it. It's really mid-range forward. It's not super bright. Um, a common foible with a lot of USB mics where they hype that mic way, way, way up, and it comes really piercing to try and make it sound bright. It's not a super bright mic. It's very mid-range forward. Make it sit well in the mix. So this is really designed to be over a music bed. For me, it does sound a little on the boxy side. I'll say that this microphone, I don't find it particularly flattering for my voice because I'm really accustomed to hearing the bass in my voice. I have a, a reasonably low voice. It, it, it takes a lot of what I'm accustomed to hearing away from my voice. But I think for a lot of voices, this will be just fine. If your voice is not really uh, a low baritone, um, then this is going to be fine. But it does have a little bit of a, a boxy, a boxy sound effect to a boxy sound to it, which I didn't, which I didn't expect. It could be part of the intentional EQ curve. I don't know. The one thing I will say is, from what I've read in the documentation, Elgato, um, this is a firmware updatable microphone, and they say that as part of the the Wavelink ecosystem, as part of their overall streaming ecosystem, they may end up pushing new features to this microphone over time. It's a possibility. I do know that it's updatable uh, via firmware. So it's possible that there could be a firmware update that adds new functionality, changes an EQ curve. I, I really don't have any idea. But that would be the one request I'd have from Elgato is the ability to actually make this sound a lot more neutral because it does sound a little mid-range forward, a little boxy to me. It's just uh, just my impression. But as part of the overall streaming ecosystem that Elgato offers, I think it fits right in. I think it integrates really well to your typical Elgato sort of streaming rig between a stream deck and your cam links and getting everything squared away. I think it fits in. I think it fits in fairly well. Overall, you be, you be the judge of the sound. You let me know in the comments what you think of the sound. I'd be interested to hear where you think it would apply. If you think it would apply, what, what you think of it. Um, that's it. So I think in a, in the streaming rig, I think you have a pretty good sense of how it fits in. I think I've hopefully I've given you a good sense of of how the Wavelink software integrates into the overall ecosystem, how the microphone fits into the overall ecosystem, and hopefully given a, a, a good overview of it. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments and what you what you think of this new product. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Now go get yourself a microphone, maybe a USB microphone optimized for streaming. Could be. But get yourself a microphone so that you can get out there and record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time. Take care. Be well.